2004, we were very excited when work started on our new heritage school. However, on a rainy, miserable day in December of that year, the work suddenly had to stop. And we were terribly disappointed until we realised the reason why. A remarkable and surprising discovery had been made. Builders digging into the hillside to create an access road had uncovered a cave, and inside that cave they found pots and bones. Now, as I said, the work had to stop suddenly while investigators were called in to find out about the tomb. Now, here we have some photographs taken on that day in December. As you can see, it's not very clear, but it gives us some idea of what they looked at as they could see inside the cave. This display is an introduction to the main exhibition in the foyer. And here is a photograph of some of the artefacts that were found on that day. The archaeologists tell us that some of the items date back to the early Imperial Roman period, almost 2,000 years ago. And Year 3 have been studying the Romans as part of their history topic this year. And we have included some of their work in this display. As you can see, there are their pots. And here is some of their creative writing of a day in the life of someone living at that time. We have been fortunate also to get some copies made of the items from our local pottery. And the craftsman has told us he's made them in a traditional way. And lastly, I'd like to show you this newspaper report. Because we like to think the discovery may have been reported in 2004. This is the start of our exhibition. And as you can see, we've included an enlargement of the photograph of the inside of the cave. I particularly like this as it gives us a great sense of perspective. And then we made our own cave. As you can see, we've included more pots from our local pottery. These copies are slightly larger than the ones that we discovered. What is interesting about the cave is that artefacts were found in niches or hollows that were dug out in the walls of the cave. People believed at that time that those who died needed gifts and possessions from life to take with them on their journey to the afterlife, and those niches were used for the placing of those gifts. This cave then that was discovered was a burial chamber, a tomb. This is a report made by the original excavator, Eleanor Pukopi, translated into English by our wonderful Greek department. And it tells us, amongst other things, that 105 objects were found, ranging from clay pots, glass jugs, copper needles, and fabulous golden earrings. We were able to obtain really good quality photographs of some of the artifacts. And as you can see here, we've enlarged one of the photographs and the cracks are visible on the pot, but it's still in remarkable condition considering how old it is. As you can see, we have included more enlargements of the artefacts. This is a glass jug which is remarkably intact after all these years. And here also we have some more work from the year threes and their study of the Romans and the Roman period. And here, I find this particularly interesting. This is the plan of the layout of the tomb. And if you can see closely, there are numbers here in circles which show where the artefacts were found. Some are in black and some are in red. While the archaeologists were investigating the tomb, they discovered another tomb underneath that was even older. And the red circle numbers actually refer to the older items. If you can see, there are two numbers here, 84, which refer to the golden earrings. And we've included a photograph in our timeline. And we've actually been able to include as many photographs in the correct time period as we could. It's fascinating to see there are two different lamps buried over a period of 300 years. Our investigation into the discovery ended with our visit to the Limassol Archaeological Museum, where we were able to see some of the original artefacts. These are not on display and we had to make a special appointment. Here you can see a glass bottle. The archaeologist tells us it may have contained perfume. And here is a silver ring. And this is a glass bead which would have comprised parts of a necklace. The earrings again. And this is unusual. This was a mirror 
It was highly polished, not made of glass, but of bronze, and it would have had a wooden handle to be held in the hand. The large number of items and the discovery of the jewellery leads us to believe that the remains were people who had a high social standing in the area and that it may have been a family tomb. Because it was an ancient Greek site, our Greek language department students from year two to year nine have studied and researched into this period despite the pressures of their very full timetable. From clay pots to the role of women in the Hellenistic period, their work has been inspired by the discovery. One of the year nine classes has looked into the mythology of the time and has created a 3D model of the journey of the soul. Here you can see the river Styx and the journey to the underworld. Lots of questions remain unanswered still. Where are the bones? Are there any more to be found? And where exactly is the tomb? Unfortunately, after the excavation, the tomb was deemed unsafe and was filled in, and no one actually remembers where it was actually located. Restrictions have made it very difficult for our students this year, and one thing that has been affected has been our ability to go on trips and visit interesting places. Here at the Heritage School, we think we've created our own museum, with the added significance that this is where the artefacts were found. At the Heritage School, we realise the importance of looking at history and our past. While moving forward with technology and innovation, it is from our past that we learn the valuable lessons to use in our future. This, after all, is the deeper meaning of the school's name, the Heritage.